Santorini is in the news again. Hi, guys. By February, there was intensifying seismic activity that had evolved into a serious, serious crisis, leading to infrastructural damage, mass evacuation, and the declaration of an emergency, the fears of a volcanic eruption of a larger earthquake, or both. And then it became quiet after that swarm kind of subsided, I don't want to say end it because we've seen continuous earthquakes since then in that area. But now there's a new earthquake swarm with a magnitude 3.9 at the maximum. But the location is kind of surprising, interesting. But that's not all. We had the 10th Delphi Economic Forum that was held on April 13th. And that has revealed and I've reported about this a few weeks ago, that the use of advanced machine learning technology has enabled them to detect the real amount of earthquakes that happened in this earthquake swarm in February. And that's blowing your mind, guys. 50,000 earthquakes, over 50,000 earthquakes. Of course, many of them in the very, very micro seismic range. That's why they were hard to detect with usual seismometers. But, and some of it were quite intense as well in the higher magnitudes during the swarm in February. So this early detection has enhanced earthquake forecasting and has also improved the warning procedures during this crisis. Did we get a lot of warning? I don't really remember that. We didn't get warning, oh, there's a bigger one coming, there's a bigger... No, the earthquakes just kept coming. That's why it's interesting what they re revealed, because they revealed for the first time their results on this forum. So well, they said that they have used this enhanced AI technology um, since December 2024, because it had started to rumble there as well a little bit. So over 50,000 earthquakes. This is a number that is absolutely mind blowing. This is like they detected basically 10 times more earthquakes than you would be able to detect with traditional methods. But before we get into this, what this means and what this is, Let's just talk about today. Today, there was a strong tremor, 3.9, 3.6. It varies which organization you look at. And over the past 48 hours, 15, at least 15 tremors have occurred in the area that was the scene of this powerful swarm, this powerful earthquake swarm in February that we just talked about. And most of the new earthquakes are located a little bit in a different spot. If you look at the earthquakes um, that you see here on the map, these dots, um, it is a cluster and they're concentrated somewhat further south than most of the earthquakes that we have seen in the February swarm, if you compare the two pictures. So the epicenter of that strong tremor of that 3.6 was roughly 23 kilometers east, southeast of Tyra. Tyra, that is, you see this here on the map, at a depth between 10 and 12 kilometers. So where is this coming from? Is this a result that so much tension has been created during the last event, during the last swarms, that now the tension is spreading to other areas and that the surface is moving there, fault lines are moving there, cracks that are in this area? Or is there something new forming? It's too early to say that. So how are they using the AI to measure, to control, to observe what's going on in this area. The British Geological Survey has used a machine learning algorithm and they call it QuakeFlow. Um, it, it's processing seismic data in real time and it's using cloud computing. It's a very advanced technology that allows for continuous and precise monitoring of this seismic activity. And by applying QuakeFlow, they were able to detect around 1,500 smaller earthquakes. They already started in December 2024. 
So that's probably when things started to develop more seriously. And then you, it really started to show in February. So that was well before that significant spike in February and January. It already started late January. But by February, it had evolved into this massive earthquake swarm, this massive crisis, this emergency. So according to the National and Capodistrian University of Athens, the seismic crisis was related to the intrusion of magma at a depth very shallow of only three to five kilometers, that's two to three miles below Anudros. And that has caused tectonic stresses and has also activated faults, which has further accelerated the earthquakes. So this is interesting that they're now saying this because they, at the beginning, and quite for, for quite a long time, they were pushing this magmatic theory away completely, saying this is only tectonic. And now they're saying that the phenomenon will continue as long as the magma chamber is being fed. So they're admitting, like in Iceland, where we just had a magma intrusion that formed this massive 20 kilometer long magma dike underneath the surface and erupted quickly only for six hours. Magma was finding a way to the surface near Grindavik. But now they're saying this. They're saying there's a magma chamber that is filling up. And we know what that means. If a magma chamber is refilling, we could see another event like this. The question is when? They haven't given us more specific information yet. So now that we're seeing another cluster, is the magma chamber getting ready? So the National Observatory of Athens that also observes these earthquakes and the area has reported that AI has identified four seismic faces and that is suggesting the presence of a magmatic vein that is extending northeast towards Anudros and that matches I've reported about this exactly where this earthquake swarm was moving around and was traveling and their geodetic data that's interesting as well that they presented have indicated that a four centimeter, that's roughly that much, that's 1.6 inches, elevation of the caldera at Santorini by January 2025 has been followed by a 12 centimeter, 4.7 inches subsidence near Anudros within two weeks. If you're familiar with my channel and if you're watching what's going on in Iceland, you know after every magma intrusion, we saw some valleys being formed, zones where the land was subsiding, subsidence zones after this magma was intruding. And it seems the same is happening here. Are we talking about a system that woke up that might do the same what is happening in Iceland, like intrusion, repeat, maybe eruption, repeat? They were thinking that the underwater volcano Colombo that is very near, just a little bit north of Santorini, might be the culprit and might erupt because it has shown some land rise. But now they're kind of moving away from that theory because we kind of know that the magma intrusion was coming from a magma chamber underneath Santorini, underneath Nea Kameni. That's an island within the Santorini caldera and the magma chambers underneath. And Nea Kameni had the last eruption in the 50s. That's why it looks so black. It, it looks like a lava flow. What they're saying is land was rising four centimeters, was subsiding 12 centimeters towards Anudros. So they say this is an indication that there was magma movement from underneath Nea Kameni's magma chamber towards Anudros. And as you remember, I've said this basically from the beginning. And I was receiving, oh, a shitstorm for that. <laughs> oh, it's not true, it's fear-mongering. Well, 
It's not. And what they're thinking is that it was approximately 8 million cubic meters. That's 282 million cubic feet of magma was shot out of that magma chamber. And the deformation continues. It's still rising. Show you the maps again where they have detected a land rise not only at Nea Kamini, also on the edges of that caldera of Santorini. So deformation continued at a reduced rate in the eastern caldera. And in that meeting, a member of the Academy of Athens has also mentioned the incident of 1956, what happened in the 1950s with a large earthquake 7.7 .7, followed by an aftershock 6.9 and a tsunami and a small eruption at Nea Kameni. And they were speaking about that tsunami that has reached some say 20 meters, some say even 30 meters, like something like 66 to 75 feet inland. So what they pointed out at that meeting is the limited infrastructure that Greece has for that and also to measure land rise. If you compare it with Campi Fligre, I've just released a video about this where they have all their measuring stations and tight gogs in the water where you can see if the land is rising, you can see the water how the water levels are changing. And in the port of Pozzuoli, we just had a ferry run aground because the land is rising so much that the water is receding. So they have only 12 tight gogs in Greece and no real-time underwater seismographs. Wow, this is kind of surprising and scary as well. So scientists have proposed the establishment of a volcanic observatory, basically based on the Santorini system for continuous observation. And we have that for the supervolcano Campi Fligre in Italy and Vesuvius. There's the Vesuvius Observatory. There's the INGV that is monitoring this thing 24-7. So, yes, what we have seen in late February, gradual decline of the seismic swarm with both the frequency but also the strength of tremors decreasing, but we still saw like in the four ranges, some four, they they got less, but the one, one or two we, we always saw during the last few weeks. And the AI systems like QuakeFlow, they have continued to monitor and analyze the smaller seismic events that were still happening and have refined their assessments. And they estimate that should there be a volcanic eruption, it could result in the losses of 40 billion euros for Greece. Greece is having financial problems already. And 1.4 trillion US dollars globally over five years. So they better get their together and get these monitoring stations in place. They should also seek help from other agencies that are highly experienced, like Italy. And you know, tourism in Santorini is, is, is their lifeline, uh, has contributed to 5.9 billion euros to Greece's GDP in 2022. And that tourist, tourism has faced significant disruptions when these mass evacuations have happened in, in February. And still, hoteliers are optimistic. Um, they hope that they will have a strong recovery for the 2025 season. That remains to be seen. So we have to see what's going on. This doesn't seem to be over yet. Maybe it's starting new. Maybe it's dying out. Who knows, guys? But I thought this was an interesting update. If you liked this video, click the notification bell, subscribe and like it, please. And leave me a comment, would you go to Santorini for vacation right now? Because if you watch my channel, you know there's other problems on the island, not only the earthquakes, 
the safety of the hotels. Check out my other videos. I have a playlist about Santorini. You find all that on my channel start page. And if you want to support the channel, click the links in the description. I have a buy me a coffee site. The link is in the description. And thanks for the supers. And thanks for just being here. If you want to become a member of the channel for behind the scenes videos, you can support the channel with a monthly membership. You just have to click the join button or also check the link in the description. So stay safe, guys. I hope to see you very soon. Check out the video on the end screen. Bye.